Hello, uh, we're back department. Uh, yeah, I'd like to file a claim. Ladies and gentlemen, Treyarch just released their brand new blog post, Fixing Black Ops 6 Zombies. I haven't made a zombies video in a couple of weeks just because I was letting all of this settle down and we were waiting for Treyarch to kind of make the next move. But, you know, previously, we had talked about all of the details that Black Ops 6 Zombies was going to cover and many of the complaints were surrounding Liberty Falls in regards to its HUD, its atmosphere, and so on. And we've gotten a blog post addressing everything. All of the community criticisms and all of the changes that they have made so stick with me we're going to cover everything you need to know about this blog post in a very simple condensed easy to understand way this blog post details all the changes Treyarch has made to the zombies mode since the cod next stream and then all of the gameplay that we got uh you know after that point and this also talks about all of the augments we're going to be getting and believe me we're going to dive into that in just a second but before we get there i want to talk about the changes to liberty falls because this is some of the big stuff they say since the debut of the early gameplay footage at COD Next back in August, the Zombies team at Treyarch took a look at the map and they continue to iterate on the look, feel, sound of Liberty Falls and to crank up the map's creepiness factor. Heading into launch, players can expect a moodier visual tone to the map along with gorier set dressings and new environmental audio to more intensely reflect the chaos of a very recent dimensional breach. Now as we can see, the only image they give us is this part near the church and this was previously just a blue empty sky before and they've added some like purple ethereum dimension you know from the dark ether pouring in a little bit so they literally did do the thing where they changed the sky box to some degree this is the only picture we have of like an updated atmosphere so we're gonna have to take their word for it and play the map whenever it does come out but it looks like on top of a handful of visual changes to the map uh there is also a lot of auditory things as well including an easter egg song but also just more ambience i think is what they're going for i just want to say as well props to the treyarch team for actually listening to and considering and implementing on this feedback they could have very well just you know looked at all of the criticism and just did nothing and then released the map as is but they've cared enough to actually change some things and you know have some new additions which is wonderful however one change i hope they do make which i'm not sure if they have i really want them to get rid of these laser door barriers in liberty falls uh, i was talking about this on my podcast by the way if you guys haven't checked it out it's called going dark go subscribe to it right now we're almost at 10k subs and uh me and my co-host t-dog he brought up a really good point he said that it kind of takes away a lot of the tension factor when you can just see right through a barrier that you're supposed to buy you know you can see what's directly behind it it takes away a lot of the risk reward associated with opening doors and zombies and I hadn't really considered that point before but it's a great one so these laser barriers never really seemed to fit uh, the tone for for Liberty Falls even as is and I hope alongside all of the atmosphere and visual changes that's one of the things that gets looked at however I, realistically I'm doubtful that it will be I mean we'll have to wait for the map to come out but the fact that they've even addressed the atmosphere situation and ambience at all I think is a massive W and again this is the only image we have to go off of so we're just gonna have to take them at their word they do say that there's also plenty of atmospheric changes once you're doing the main Easter egg and we you know we got told that at COD next there was a lot more to the map once you're actually doing the main quest so I'm sure there's gonna be some other stuff to discover but we'll just leave it at there for now because there's no more details other than that they didn't do any atmosphere adjusting to, to terminus as far as I can tell it was just a look at Liberty Falls so it feels like they've done a lot to sort of creepify and zombify the map and I guess we'll have to you know hold my judgment until I actually get to play the updated version uh, but let's move on to talk about the HUD this is the big one for me this is something I made literally like an entire video about uh, and the HUD has been changed thankfully so let's go over the details first of all they say the UI team has also continued to update the game's modular HUD touching up some of the zombie specific elements that can appear across most HUD preset options and adding new settings these updates include character portraits added to the lower left corner by default this is amazing this is one of the things that I was preaching please put a character little portrait at the bottom it adds so much to the personality of zombies and making you feel attached to a character and a map and giving it some identity this is a really good change and I'm stoked to see them uh, implement this this was like a big thing for me now they also say general alignment and color adjustments made across the entire HUD. I'm not totally sure what that means. It's very vague, uh, but they do say perk icons are now positioned closer together, which is like, all right. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. They're kind of like, you know, right next to each other. Uh, there's also zombie specific widgets added for certain in-game actions. So I imagine like, I don't know, wall buys, gobble gum, maybe interacting with certain Easter egg steps will have, you know, their own unique HUD in game or maybe buying the mystery box. I think that's a pretty cool one. We'll have to wait and see how that actually affects the map when we play it. There's no examples. They do 
say a new in-game gobblegum reward animation added so i guess when you get gobblegum there will be a different icon now i never knew what the original icon was because we weren't playing a build that could earn gobblegum so i have no clue what the original version was uh so there's nothing to, to compare it to but i guess that's cool i at first i thought it was basically them saying that there's a different animation for eating gobblegum but i don't believe that's actually you know what it's getting at they've also said visibility sliders added to allow players to fine tune or completely disable additional hud elements including score feed metals and notifications mini map opacity weapon and equipment and so on now this basically means all of the stuff in the center of your screen the kill pop-up animations the health bars the metals etc a lot of people don't like that and i guess now this means we have uh, an option to completely disable the mini map which again i think is a good uh, it's a good option but i always i was talking about this on the podcast too i feel like it would have been a good idea to play in standard mode you have no mini map at all but if you're playing the map in guided mode which they're going to be releasing for every single map then maybe that can have the mini map on at this point in the game i don't think they're going to do that this seems pretty set in stone but uh i will say this this is an updated look at the new default hud and it's certainly better than uh what we had at the launch of black ops 6 and all the pre-release footage but i will say i don't think it goes quite far enough just in the bottom left the one big thing is like i still don't love the health bar the armor and even the player name icon there's actually no player name in this picture so i'm just gonna assume it's gonna still look identical to like the warzone font or how it does in the you know pre-release version of the game the stuff that i played uh, i'm not totally sure it doesn't even show it in the screenshot but i i think this is all great and this still is a w personally i still would have taken it a little farther with changes but i understand why they didn't want to upend every single thing now after that in the blog treyarch lays out a bunch of different locations that you're going to see around the map in both terminus and liberty falls describing some it's kind of weird it's like they're describing these sections of the map like they're pois in like warzone or something it's very odd i'm going to skip past a lot of the stuff in the blog because it's not very relevant to what we need to talk about today uh one of the big things we are going to talk about though is augments we have every single perk that we're going to get on launch with all of the augments and we're gonna go over all of them because some of them are pretty damn cool I'm not gonna lie so first and foremost the way that augments work is that you'll unlock these by simply selecting them in the menu and then just playing the game you'll load up a match after selecting juggernaut for example and just by getting just regular XP that will move you along that track and unlock you different augments that you can place on your perk uh, in another game so we're gonna go over all of the details of the perks and augments themselves starting with juggernaut we can take a look at this one here obviously jug increases max health we've all known this however uh you can also have one major augment and one minor augment on your perk as well out of these selections so for juggernaut the first major is called probiotic this slightly increases your maximum health which is pretty cool I, we don't know by how much but you know that's pretty interesting just a little bit of extra health is never a bad thing the next one is turtle shell armor acts as a shield on your back completely absorbing all damage to your back no damage mitigation when hit from the front so this just turns juggernaut and armor into a zombie shield for everybody who likes having a zombie shield they've got you covered that's actually pretty insane of course it comes with a big sacrifice which is that you don't get any damage negation from the side or front i have to assume that means the armor on your back is just going to be stronger and heavier than i have no clue because it kind of sounds like a bad option but uh for everybody who likes zombie shields and the way that they function this one's for you uh and then they also have reactive armor which is when an armor plate breaks nearby normal enemies are stunned for a short time and if I'm not mistaken I believe this was a mechanic in Cold War zombies I think I could be wrong about that but either way this one's pretty cool as well for the minor augments they have retaliation this deals bonus damage while health is low after that we have hardened plates which is just armor have more damage mitigation so you're going to take less damage when getting hit with armor is what that means and then there's durable plates which increases your armor durability so it's less likely to break now those two might not sound too different from one another but I assure you they certainly are uh, now let's talk about stamina up obviously the most classic addition of this perk just increases your movement speed and it still does that now for our major augments we have free faller which just makes you totally immune to fall damage which might be big because at Treyarch we were playing terminus and there's some pretty high jumps on that map so it genuinely might be useful uh, when you're playing that one there's also dasher which increases your attack sprint duration and then there's stalker which is walking faster while aiming and then for 
the minor augments, we have hard target, while attack sprinting projectile damage is reduced, which is very interesting. Quarterback it allows you to use equipment while sprinting, and then hot foot gives you a speed boost after your equipment kills an enemy. Weirdly enough, there's no fire while sprinting augment, which I think is fascinating. I feel like maybe this will be something down the road, but you know, for Omni Movement in Zombies, I feel like this needs to happen, but Stamina Up actually doesn't allow you to do that, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now, moving on to Speed Cola, obviously the classic addition is that it helps you reload faster and replate armor quicker as well. For Major Augments, we have Supercharged. Field upgrades recharge a little bit faster, that's very helpful. Classic Formula is your reload speed is even faster, so you can just have a beefier version of Speed Cola. Next, we have Phantom Reload, which is weapon magazines are slowly refilled over time. This is actually what Mule Kick in Cold War did, and it's very OP, especially for a lot of like wonder weapon strategies. This is one to keep your eye on. For minor augments, we have Speedy Roulette. The mystery box settles much faster. This is like time slip from Black Ops 4. We also have Quick Swap, which is just like fast hand, switch weapons faster, and then Fast Pitcher, which is deploy equipment faster. All pretty good ones there, I would say. Moving on to Deadshot Daiquiri. Obviously, this not only uh, improves your ADS precision, but it also makes headshots deal more damage. For major augments, we have Deadhead, which further increases critical damage, just, you know, a, a, an additional boost to your overall DPS. We also have Dead First, which deals double critical damage if an enemy is at full health. Now, I'm not totally sure if you have to kill an enemy to get that double damage. Who knows? Honestly, we'll have to wait till the game comes out to see. But then there's also Dead Again, which is critical hits have a chance of adding a bullet to your magazine. Honestly, I don't think this one's going to be very good. I don't think many people are going to use that. Uh, Deadhead is probably going to be the best there. For minor augments, we have Dead Break, which increases damage to armor pieces because there's armored zombies you can fight against and this will deal additional damage to armored zombies. There's also Dead Draw, which reduces your hip fire spread, which can be really nice in zombies, honestly. And then Dead Set, which reduces gun movement while performing advanced movement. I have no clue exactly what that means, but I can only assume it has to do with Omni movement and or sliding and mantling, things like that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be super helpful in zombies, but, you know, it's worth trying out, I'm sure. Uh, let's move on to Quick Revive. This, obviously, in Cold War, uh, replenishes your HP faster and allows you to pick up your friends quicker, obviously, as well. But for Major Augments, first of all, we have EMT. This reviving an ally allows them to keep all of their perks on their bleed-out bar, which can be super helpful. Equivalent Exchange is killing an enemy while downed will revive you and remove the quick revive. This can be done up to three times. It's essentially like the traditional function of quick revive. You know, it in some ways replaces the mechanic of the self-revive. That's that's a curious one. I think I'm going to try to, you know, see what I can do with that. And then there's Dying Wish, which literally works exactly how it does in BO4. I don't think I need to describe this one. If you take lethal damage, you become invulnerable for a couple seconds, and then you lose that perk. Uh, for minor augments, we have Swift Recovery. This is reviving an ally, increases your both of your movement speed for a short time. There's a Karmic Return, which is healing an ally, heals you to full health. And then the final minor augment is Slow Death, which just works like Coagulant, uh, the Gobble Gum from Black Ops 3, which increases your bleed out timer. All those are all super cool as well. And then we have Elemental Pop. This just, you know, triggers your ammo mods, alternate ammo types. For major augments, we have Citrus Focus. This is if you have an alternate ammo type on your weapon, it will only ever activate that one. It kind of focuses that, which is really nice. Uh, there's also uh, Imperial Peach, which is enemies that hit you have a chance to trigger a random ammo mod. Electric Cherry just works like how it classically does. The, you know, uh, emptier your magazine, the bigger your shock when you reload will be the stronger the damage pretty cool one minor augments is vulnera bean slightly increase enemy elemental weakness damage that's awesome you can exploit that a bit more pineapple blast equipment also triggers a random ammo mod and then chill berry slightly reduces all ammo mod cooldowns all very cool as well moving on to phd flopper this gives you uh, explosive dive to prone and immunity to self-inflicted explosive damage uh, so for our major augments we have gravity md just falling from heights will create explosions so you know just jumping off buildings and stuff dr ram is a uh, tact sprint knocks down and damages base zombies that can actually be kind of broken i'm gonna probably end up looking forward to using this one and then phd slider is sliding into enemies triggers explosions for minor augments we have environmentalist become immune to environmental damage while sliding uh eod technician is slightly reduce height and distance requirements for explosions and then finally we have tribologist which is sliding distance and speed are increased that actually might be pretty op as well i think that one's going to be good and then last but not least for perks we have melee 
Macchiato. This replaces your weapon gun butt with a deadly punch. So for major augments is Expresso. All melee attacks are slightly faster. Vampiric Extraction is melee attacks heal a small amount for your health. This was actually in Cold War as well with your uh, melee category. A triple Shot is your punch can hit multiple enemies at once, which is probably genuinely OP. And then for minor augments for that perk, we have Stick and Move. Backpedal speed is increased after a successful melee attack. Next is Strength Training. Your punch can one hit kill normal enemies for longer, so essentially a Bowie knife. And then finally is Hidden Impact. Melee kills reload a portion of your held weapon. All very cool stuff. Those are all of the perks and all of the augments that we're going to have on launch. Now, down the road in future seasons, there's going to be new additional perks added as well as brand new augments but let's really quickly talk about ammo mods because those have augments too. So the five ammo mods that will be in the game on launch are uh, Brain Rot, Cryo Freeze, Deadwire, Blast Furnace, and Shadow Rift. Now at this point, instead of reading out every single augment for um, literally all of the ammo mods, I'm just going to go ahead and put them up on screen and you guys can pause and watch along. And I'm just going to basically say a couple words about these ammo mods. I didn't get to use every single one of them when I played Black Ops 6. Uh, the only one that I didn't actually get to use personally was Deadwire wire weirdly enough but i got you know hands on with the new shadow rift one it's really good dead wire is always a classic although i don't think it's going to be as just op as it was in black ops 3 but you know we'll have to wait and see on that either way the ammo mods are getting a handful of augments uh 30 to be exact on launch and i'm sure they'll probably be more down the road as well as new ammo mods themselves for field upgrades it's the same case i'm going to go and throw these up on screen too these are a lot of like build crafting material and like kind of what you want to select in your loadout to really find your role throughout the game and all of these are gonna have augments too this includes energy mine which is just unlocked by default frenzied guard is unlocked at level 9 dark flares unlocked at level 20 healing aura level 33 and ether shroud level 47 the only one we don't have from cold war is uh, uh ring of fire rest in peace now right here we have an image of what the loadout system is going to look like you can select your primary weapon your melee your field upgrade your lethal and tactical and then your gobble gun pack at the bottom as you can see you can grab a total of five in your collection now let's talk about all of the gobble gum that are coming on launch we have a list of every single one of them so buckle down and let's get into it here's a list of all of the rare gobble gums on launch stock option anywhere but here temporal gift shields up killjoy cashback and arsenal accelerator these are all ones from black ops 3 that we've seen before and uh, these seem to be the most easy ones to get in the game with epic gobble gums we have who's keeping score nowhere but there profit sharing exit strategy free fire soda fountain and respin cycle the only true new one in this bunch is actually exit strategy and uh, the uh, the description of this is activate exfil vote immediately and reduces zombie spawns during exfil so that's a pretty interesting mechanic they might be uh, useful for like Easter egg runs after that we have legendary which are idolize Phoenix up on the house immolation liquidation wall power crate power and wall-to-wall -wall clearance these were all in black ops 3 and black ops 4 as well some pretty solid choices here and then last but not least ladies and gentlemen are all Ultra Gobble Gums and Whimsical. So here are all of the ones that we have. There's Near Death Experience, Wonder Bar, Newtonian Negation, Perkaholic, Hidden Power, Raindrops, and Indigestion. So the brand new ones here we've never seen before are Wonder Bar. This guarantees a Wonder Weapon out of the Mystery Box, which is insane. And then there's Hidden Power, which automatically upgrades your current gun to Legendary Rarity, which is also huge. That's going to be insanely helpful. And then the other new one is a Whimsical Gobble Gum that obviously doesn't affect gameplay, but Indigestion lasts for three minutes, and Zombies Killed experience Extreme Flatulence. Huge. Thank you, Treyarch. Now, there's also some additional stuff in the menu about Bear and intel and stuff like that that you'll be able to progress through and lock as you play the game but these are like the major pieces of content that are coming and all of them explained so this was a giant blog post and it was a lot more than i was expecting i'm gonna leave a link in the description if you want to read through it yourself and you know get into all the details they have but i wanted to cover what was most relevant in this video there's a lot of stuff that i just don't feel like the average player really needs to know uh but uh basically i wanted to cover everything that you guys do need to know in this video however there will be a lot more to come i believe there's going to be more information uh, very soon as well but I mean we're pretty much up on the launch and so if you guys want to stay up to date with all things Black Ops 6 I will have tons of videos for you here so please don't forget to subscribe if you have not already leave a like on the video and uh, we'll get ready for the game thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys soon peace